Hey everybody, Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com, back with some Pittsburgh Steelers preview and prediction for this Week 11 game between the Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers. AFC North certainly looks a lot different now than it did to start the week. Let's talk about it. And before we begin, if you guys could like this video, also subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate that. And of course, the AFC North has really turned on its head. No Deshaun Watson for the rest of the season. No Joe Burrow for the rest of the season. No Mark Andrews for the rest of the season. So hopefully Pittsburgh can come out of this one um, healthy overall. Of course, they're missing some pieces like Cole Holcomb, like Juan Alexander for the season. Makeup as Patrick will not play in this game. But to look at Cleveland... Of course, they're going to start rookie quarterback Dorian Thompson-Robinson. And obviously, that's a downgrade from Deshaun Watson, who had struggled this year overall, but was playing much better football as of late. Had a great comeback rally in the second half to beat Baltimore. But I don't want to take this for granted, because I think DTR is going to do a couple things that can get Pittsburgh some trouble. His mobility, his ability to extend plays and scramble on third down for yards, that's going to be something to contest and deal with, and your rush lane integrity is going to have to be really sound in this game. You know, young guys like him that have an asset like his mobility, he ran 4-5 something coming out of UCLA, those are guys that are going to rely on that. And whenever I'm sure coaches are telling him, just don't make a mistake, don't turn the ball over, do the safe play, that's going to be a lot, probably a lot of scrambling from him. Um, but I think they're going to, they're not going to be super conservative. They're, of course, going to run the ball. That's going to be their mantra they're not gonna they don't want to throw 40 times that's what happened in their blowout loss against Baltimore in week four the other game that he started but I think they're gonna come out and run some empty some you know easy kind of triangle half field reads for him to make they're gonna spread the field they're gonna keep Pittsburgh in their base defense uh, when they're hurting an inside backer with you know Holcomb and Alexander out and they're gonna attack with guys like David Njoku who was DTR's top target in week four, like Amari Cooper, who they're going to push inside to number three and try to work him over the middle. So they're going to do things that Cleveland has always done. That's going to be a com commitment to the run game, but they're going to go you know, heavy personnel, 12, multiple tight ends out there on the field, and then spread you out and try to win the field horizontally, get the ball out quick. It's going to help their tackles that are really hurting in this game. That's the other element. You know, we talk about Watson being out and that's the, the headline and rightfully so, but they they're down <clears throat> potentially three tackles this year. They've lost Jed Wills for almost the season, if not the entire season. Jack Conklin went down in week one, and now Day One Jones, the rookie right tackle, who's a good player, had a good season. He's questionable. It sounds like he's going to play, but not guaranteed, and may not be a hundred percent. So they're going to have you know, let's assume Jones at right tackle, and then Jerron Christian at left tackle. So they're down a couple guys there. The interior line is still pretty strong, but they're Mission is to get the ball out quickly, so Highsmith and Watt can't win against those tackles. And frankly, Highsmith and Watt have been a bit quieter the last couple weeks. I mean, against Tennessee, there was a good deal of pressure. Against the Packers, the pass rush overall was not as consistent as it needed to be. Um, so hopefully, just across the board, you get some more pressure in this game. Traditionally, they have always had pressure against the Browns, so hopefully that happens again. Of course, the top priority for Pittsburgh's defense and for the Browns' offense is stopping the run slash running the football. They have a three-headed attack at Jerome Ford, who's not been an incredibly efficient runner, but he's going to be their top guy. Kareem Hunt is going to see about 10 carries per game, and Pierre Strong's going to be their third stringer. Not play a lot, but he's more of a perimeter toss game, out to the numbers kind of guy that has some speed to win on the outside. But I think they're going to work off of that some play action and take some shots. They did that against Baltimore, and I think they recognize they can't just try to run the ball to victory against Pittsburgh. They can't go super, super conservative, especially as the Steelers' run defense has improved with Cam Haywood's return. So I would expect some some boots, some play action, change the launch point, get DTR out on the move. And I think for both offenses in this game, it's going to be about can you hit the one big play? You know, Pittsburgh's offense not very good in Week 2. They at least hit a big play. 71-yard touchdown to George Pickens. Of course, got two defensive touchdowns as well. But I think the Browns' calculation is we're not going to drive the ball 10, 12 plays crisp, efficiently, pick up first downs, convert on third and four, that kind of stuff. We got to hit a chunk play that maybe changes the course of a game or gets you a late touchdown at the half or something like that. So with Cooper and some talented receivers to throw to, you're going to see them take some shots. And Pittsburgh's going to put eight in the box. They're going to stop the run. It's going to create 1v1 matchups on the outside. So who wins those those downfield throws on the outside of the crosser route or the Yankee concept? That may define who wins this game. 
Defensively, of course, the Browns are very strong, one of the top units in football. They're healthy overall. They got talent at all three levels. Miles Garrett, uh, Zedarius Smith, Dalvin Tomlinson, etc. Up front, JOK, one of the top and most athletic off-ball linebackers in football. Behind, at corners, they're very strong. Got a lot of trust in their corners in Denzel Ward and uh, Greg Newsom, Martin Emerson, and some solid safety play. Been some injuries there, but Grant Delpit's having a nice season and their personality very much is to stop the run first and foremost they're going to put eight in the box they're going to put Delpit down there and especially against Pittsburgh you know the Browns have the same mission as the Steelers who defensively is stop the run make the quarterback beat you when you see Pittsburgh run for 166 against Tennessee 205 against Green Bay that's how they won these games obviously and so stopping the run is going to be an even more critical component of things for the Cleveland Browns and how do you how do you beat this defense? It's tough to do. There's not a lot of weaknesses, frankly. Um, I didn't see a lot on tape that really gave me a lot of kind of thought of, okay, attack here. So it's really about doing your job. Can Pittsburgh keep their power gap scheme working against that front? Is going to be the biggest challenge. Do you allow these linebackers to run free in week two? I saw their off-ball linebackers just uncovered the entire time because Pittsburgh couldn't really win at the first level or they were taking... So much attention, understandably so, you know, trying to secure the first level, double teams, they couldn't climb and get to the second level. Um, and so those linebackers like JOK, like JOK, excuse me, ran free and really made some plays and, and stifled that run game. So will Cleveland run more of their five down front? They used that in week two effectively. I have not seen it used as often lately, but they may bring it back for this game given the success that it had against Pittsburgh earlier in the season. Secondary wise, again, really strong. They're going to mix man and zone. They're typically more zone on, say, third and long. You're going to see more cover two, cover two invert on typically, you know, third and five and closer. You're going to see a lot of cover one. Generally, they're a single high team. They don't really play a lot of two high shells overall because they trust their corners to win on the outside and they really want to stop the run. So I think you're going to see Kenny Pickett go back to those outside shots the way that Cleveland's going to take some vertical shots. The Browns will do it more more off of play action. Pittsburgh will just kind of do it a bit off of play action, but just kind of seeing anytime you get cover one, 1v1, Johnson and Pickens on a corner, that's where Pickett wants to go with the football. So can you win those matchups? That'll be important. And then just handling the blitzes and the sim pressures. Miles um, Garrett's the top guy to worry about, of course, but they're going to manufacture pressure too. They're a deeper group overall than they have been in past years with uh, Quanquo and, and Smith and Tomlinson. And those guys have really done a good job getting some pressure as well. So how do you handle those sim looks? And Schwartz is going to blitz. They're one of the highest blitz rates in football about a third of the time. And dealing with that, of course, want to stay out of third and long. That's true of any game, but especially so in this one. And and then how do you handle Garrett, you know, giving chips and help and identifying him? He's moved around more this season than he has in the past. And really, I think Pittsburgh, to their credit, Against Garrett and others, and other games, Aaron Donald, for example, have done a really good job of, of, of not letting those guys like Garrett, the stars, write the story and take over the game. I think Miles Garrett had a really good game in week two against Cleveland. The, the, the box score does not show it because Pittsburgh was always pairing anytime he was on the field, anytime there was a 1v1 situation, more on Garrett for the ball to come out quick. Three step game is paired with anytime you're 1v1, more on Garrett when you're able to double team him and ship him or when he's off the field that's when Pittsburgh kind of went more of their five-step game play action game stuff like that so they're able to kind of hide their, their production and hide their talent enough in this one so Pittsburgh will have to do it again Garrett generally speaking is not taking over games against the Browns or against Pittsburgh I should say the way that TJ Watt has against Cleveland uh, time after time so can that happen again that's always the mission just quick note special teams I think in these likely low scoring games field position field goals always important so Harvin I think has improved had having his best season so far um, that's going to be important of course playing the field position battle making that offense try to drive the field and then Boswell who's been near automatic that just won 61 yarder which you know he made the 56 yarder before the flag against Jacksonville all that kind of stuff but um, he's gonna have to really put some points on the board and I'm sure the same conversations are happening in Cleveland right now. So overall, my prediction for this game, a lot of talking here. Here's my uh, my prediction. I got Pittsburgh winning this one 16-14. Bunch of field goals from Pittsburgh, two touchdowns from Cleveland. This one's close, and you know I know that DTR is their quarterback, and you're not sure what you're going to get from him, and you hope and expect to have success with Pittsburgh. You know, in the secondary, 
just to kind of talk about that for a moment, you really wish you had some of your veteran safeties in this game, you know, even if it was Keanu Neal, but certainly Minka Fitzpatrick, because you could probably do some more disguising and, and rotation when you have some veteran, experienced guys back there you really trust. When you have some younger guys, younger corners, or a younger safety like Trenton Thompson likely to start this game, you're probably being a bit more static and not able to potentially confuse or bait the quarterback into some mistakes. So that's unfortunate there. But what it came down to for me was the Browns, and I know it's they've had quarterback issues and now a change in quarterback, but Cleveland has turned the ball over 19 times this season. That's the most in football. Pittsburgh has turned the ball over offensively eight times this season, one of the best marks, one of the lowest marks in football. So I think, you know, in, in games like this, turnovers is really what it comes down to. It certainly played a huge factor in week two. Cleveland turned the ball over four times, including the, uh, you know, game-winning touchdown by TJ Watts. So that's why I go Pittsburgh. Ultimately, the DTR will make a mistake late in this game. They're going to get some turnovers, help Pittsburgh's offense out to get some short fields, uh, put up points, and win the game. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Appreciate you guys listening. Again, we'll have a recap of this game uh, Sunday afternoon, evening or so, whenever I can get a chance to make a video. And then, of course, the All-22 breakdown throughout the week. So let me know your score predictions in the comments below. Please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate that. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.